ان الحمد لله ان احمده ونستهديه ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ به من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا وحبيبنا وقائدنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله اللهم صل عليه وعلى اله الطيبين الطاهرين واصحابه الغر الميامين وعلينا معهم اجمعين بمنك اللهم وكرمك وجودك يا اكرم الاكرمين ويا اجود الاجودين ويا ارحم الراحمين اما بعد عباد الله يقول سبحانه جل وعلا في محكم تنزيله اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم واعبدوا الله ولا تشركوا به شيئا وبالوالدين احسانا وبذي القربى واليتامى والمساكين والجار ذي القربى والجار الجنب وصاحب بالجنب وابن السبيل وما ملكت ايمانكم ان الله لا يحب من كان مختالا فخورا بارك الله لي ولكم بالقران الكريم ونفعني واجاكم بما فيه من الايات وذكر الحكيم انه تعالى جواد كريم ملك بر الرؤوف الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى صلوات الله وسلامه على محمد المصطفى وعلى اله اهل الصفا والوفا وبعد all praise is due to allah the lord of the worlds i praise and glorify his name i ask his peace and blessings upon our leader and patron muhammad members of his household his faithful companions and all those who follow the guidance that he brought until the day of qiyamah and i pray allah tabarak wa ta'ala to include you and i among those who will continue to be qualified in the life of this world and in the hereafter among the sincere followers of maulana muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam and may allah make the attainment of excellence in all good things very easy for you and for me and for all of us today esteemed brothers and sisters in islam we like to look at one of the aspect of islam that constitutes the internal dynamics and that gives it its character its beauty and its appeal that is timeless islam is ordained by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is a religion that is compatible with the human nature in every aspect of it because it is the religion that is ordained by the creator of mankind the one who created human beings who understands the needs and the requirements of human beings the one who is ever present the one who is absolutely knowledgeable the one who will never become irrelevant he is relevant he was relevant yesterday he is relevant today and tomorrow and forever he will become relevant because of his absolute knowledge he knows what was he understand what is and he also is aware of what will be so his revelation and law is based on timelessness the message of the quran is eternal eternal because yesterday it was relevant and tomorrow it will be relevant even today it is going it is still relevant in spite of the fact that most of us do not pay heed to it today we want to look at the one of the many rights that islam has guaranteed before the universal declaration of human rights and this is the right of the neighbor it is new because to inconvenience the neighbor to be harsh and wicked to the neighbor 
was one of the traits of the Asr al-Jahiliyya. If you recall, when um, uh, the emissary that Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent to Ethiopia was asked by the king of Ethiopia, why are you following him? What is he teaching you? One of the things that was said is that we used to worship idol and so on and so on, and we used to be very, very bad to our neighbors. Then he came and he enjoined upon us kindness, goodness to our neighbors. In fact, all the ramifications of neighborliness. We may ask, dear brothers and sisters in Allah's deen, before we look at this legislation in full, who is your neighbor? Who is your neighbor? This is what Islam has defined so many years ago. So many years ago, your neighbor, El Jar, who am Jaraka, Siwa an Kana, Jiwaruhu, Maskanun, Aw Dukanun, Aw Amalun Rayruha, Walamu, An al Jirana Thalatha. Your neighbor is the one who lives next. Your next door neighbor is your neighbor. The one you are in the office together is your neighbor. The one you travel together is your neighbor. The one you walk together is your neighbor. Your brother that you attend the masjid together is your neighbor. A neighborhood in one asar is described as 40 houses radius. If you live in a community, 40 houses to the left, to the right, in front of you, and behind you, those who are there are your neighbors. So you, you owe them responsibility no matter who they are. And we're going to... So neighbors are div categorized into three. The first is uh, uh, um, the one who is close to you, maybe your relation. He lives very close to you too, physically, and he is a Muslim. He has four rights over you. The first right is that he is your relation by blood or by marriage. The second is that he lives next door or in your neighborhood. The third is that he is a Muslim. All right? Um, then the fourth, of course, we understand that having been your relation. Also, enjoying Karaba, closeness, neighborhood to you, then Islam, then living in the same neighborhood with you. He has four rights. There are those who enjoy three rights, and those who are not your relation. That is, he lives next door. He is a Muslim. He lives next door to you because he's close, and then he is a Muslim. And then, because you interact, if you open your door or you open your window, you use the same road. He is your neighbor. There are those who enjoy two rights. He is, your, he is a Muslim, but he doesn't live close to you. Maybe you meet in the office, or in the masjid, he is your neighbor. Then there is someone that enjoys only one right, and that is, he is not a Muslim, he is not related to you, but he lives next door. So the right he has over you is the right of being your next door neighbor. And this right has reciprocal duties. Let us, um, let us start. Um, In a hadith of the Prophet uh, there is this uh, hadith by uh, Abdullah al-Bukhari. He said, Zil uh, Kurba, who is those who are close to you in the verse that we have just read, wa Abdullah, wa la tushriku bihi shay'an, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, wal jari zil kurba. Who is jari zil kurba? It's um, al jari zil kurba, uh, uh, that is your relation. Wal jari al junub. 
والغريب that is somebody who is not related to you then والصاحب بالجنب الصاحب بالجنب is your co-traveler even if you are travel those who are traveling together are your neighbors and they have reciprocal rights you know uh, and obligations that devolves on you brothers and sisters in Allah's deen the prophet sallallahu said madhala jibril madhala jibril you see me biljar Jibril constantly reminds me of the right of the neighbor hatta zanantu annahu annahu sayuwar sayuwarithuhu until i begin to think that maybe allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will confer the right for him to inherit me today let us look at our society so individualized so atomized um even if we live next door, maybe in a week or in two weeks or in three months, we will not even uh, see one another, even Muslims, because we are so busy. If we can't do without living with one another. That is the way Allah has created us. We are human beings. We, uh, Allah has created us to live in communities. It doesn't matter whether we share the same faith or we are from the same country, or we speak the same language, or we don't. We still have to regard one another as neighbors who have rights, and these rights will be asked from us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is hadith that is reported by Bukhari, a Muslim. That's why it is a muttafaqu alayhi. Um, then, um, what are the advantages of being neighborly. Neighborliness is a core principle of Islam. By principle, I do not mean qawaid al-Islam. I mean one of the things that can make a difference between you having strong iman and having weak iman. It can even, like it will be shown in one of the hadith that is going to be narrated. It can even make a difference between whether you are going to be fortunate or unfortunate. There is a hadith to that effect. Your fortune or otherwise is dependent largely on your neighbor. And this is a hadith of Mawlana sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Abdullah ibn Umar has uh, reported a hadith from sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He said, Khairul ashab inda Allah khairukum li sahibi. خير الأصحاب إن الله خير كل صاحبي. The best companion in the sight of Allah is the very good companion to his neighbor. Very good neighbor. He is also the best companion in the sight of Allah. So you cannot claim to be a Muslim. And you are doing things to your neighbor that are creating inconvenience without before all these um, environmental rights, uh, environmental pro protection, noise pollution was instituted. Islam has instituted it. Don't make noise. Don't block his air. Don't withdraw superfluous water from him. When you cook in your house and the, the smell is such that it escaped from your kitchen and uh, they perceive the, 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 the smell of what you are cooking, then they automatically have a right. You must give them in it. The prophet has said this in so many uh, instances. You know, add more water you know, to your soup so that uh, if you go out to buy things, to shop for your children, and when you are bringing it in, the children of your neighbor are seeing what you are bringing into your house for your own children, then they automatically have a right. It is not a privilege. They have a right. You must give them part of it. It doesn't matter whether your, neighbor's, whether your neighbor is a Muslim or is a non-Muslim. These are the reasons. You see, the, the, the Salaf, hardly do they do as much uh, uh, verbal preaching as we are doing. They warn people to Islam because of their akhlaq. That's why the Prophet says, I have been raised to come and perfect the excellent human character. Excellent human character. That's the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, 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 has raised me. وَخَيْرُ الْجِيرَانِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرُهُمْ لِجَارِ 
and the best neighbor in the sight of Allah is the best neighbor to the best person in behavior, in conduct to his neighbor. So this has not only social implications, but also religious implication. That is, and this is a, a hadith that uh, is reported, uh, that, that, that is compiled by Trimizi, wa sahahu al-Sheikh al-Allama al-Albani. Inna al-Ihsan il-Jari wal-Qiyamu bi-haqqihi sababun li-thana'i wal-madhi fi-dunya wa aqsihi mujibu li-dhammi wal-uqubat. Being good to your neighbor is a reason for you to earn praise from Allah. And doing the opposite of it is a reason for you to be rebuked by Allah. It is a reason for someone to be punished by Allah wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, save us from that. Um, uh, there is uh, a report by Ibn Ishaq uh, uh, and from Hassan Thabit. He said, Inna Allah ta'ala azzam al khatiyatu fi haqq al -jar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has magnified the little, little mistakes you make in regard to your neighbor. They are little. You think they are minor, minor things, but they are great things in the sight of Allah ta'ala. And because Allah has magnified some of these errors, they are little errors as far as you're concerned, but they are big ones as far as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concerned in this hadith. Um, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala like we have been told by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam he said ma takuluna fi dhina what did you know what, what do you say based on what I have taught you before what do you say about zina is it a good or a bad thing um, you know then they said qalu harramahu Allah wa rasuluhu fa huwa harramun ila yawm al qiyamah Allah has made it haram, forbidden, and it remains haram until the day of Qiyamah. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمُ لِأَسْحَابِ Then he told his companion, after he answered like that, he said, لِأَنْ يَذْنِ الرَّجُلُ بِعَشْرَةِ نِسْوَةِ عَيْسَرُ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَنْ يُذَنِّ بِمْرَعَةِ جَارِهِ It is better. You know? in terms of the uh, punishment that, that, that Allah will give the person who commits zina. It is better for a man to do zina with 10 women. If, there are, if, if it is possible for, for us to have half woman, it is still haram to do zina. So zina is not legitimate under any circumstance. But the Prophet is, it, it is better in terms of the punishment that the person will receive to commit zina with 10 women than to commit zina with your uh, a neighbor's wife. Why? Why has the, the punishment of zina been magnified, been doubled, been tripled many times? Because the person involved is your neighbor's wife. And in the same hadith, the Prophet said, what do you say about stealing? He said, no, it is haram. Allah and his Prophet has made it haram, and it remains haram until the day of Qiyamah. He said, it is better for someone to boggle ten houses, ten houses, than to steal from his neighbor. So Allah has made the right of the neighbor magnified and sacred and we should really in any way don't block when you are you know driving on the highway your neighbors are you know, those who are the, the 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 road users don't do anything that will inconvenience them don't create panic avoid road rage a muslim should never be involved in road rage why that is the, one of the best advice that the Prophet has given. A young man went to the Prophet and said, Please, Ya Rasulullah, admonish me. He said, The admonition that I'm going to give you is La Taghzab. Farad Dada Mirara. I repeated that many times. The Prophet said, La Taghzab.
Don't lose your cool. Don't get angry because anger. Awaluhu junun. The beginning of anger is madness. Wa akhiruhu nadama. And the end of anger is regret. Why don't you keep your cool? It's not going to last forever. You are not going to be on the road forever. Whoever is capable of, uh, of, of, of doing something you don't like is also capable of doing things that you like. Brothers and sisters in Allah's deen. Then, um, if you have a good neighbor, wallahi, you are lucky. Because it's also said, uh, Good neighbor is a reason for good fortune of a servant. And the opposite, if you have a bad neighbor, even if you are an angel, it can cause you to descend from heaven and become earthly. A bad neighbor is a terrible thing. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, uh, on, on the authority of Salman, he said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, four things are from good fortune. If you have four things, then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And I want you to keep, to take, take particular attention on these four. Particularly when it was said, and let us look at it now in our contemporary time, whether it is relevant or not. The Prophet said, Al Mar'atu Saliha, a good wife, is the beginning of good fortune. A good wife doesn't nag you, a good wife doesn't judge you, a good wife creates a very good ambience for you to perform. A good wife understands you. He understands your stomach. He understands your mood. She doesn't put pressure on you. In fact, she is uh, 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 a, on her own, a mechanism for tension reduction. All right? She is your safe space. That's a good wife. You look at her and you say, Alhamdulillah. When you are away from her, you want to return to her. You are more productive. You are, you are happier. You are healthier. You are a better person. Because always you don't have a problem. If there is a, an issue in the office, or on the road, you know that as soon as you get home, she, works, she welcomes you with a smile and an open arm. That is a good wife. The opposite. You are even afraid to go home. And that's a cause for stress, for tension, for lack of productivity or for reduced productivity in your place of work. The second is, well, must can you know, a house that is spacious. Nobody wants to live in a dungeon. You don't want um, uh, a six by six room. No. You want a room that is spacious. You want a place where your kids can play, where you can have fresh air, where everything is uh, right. So, because it enhances your health and your productivity. It enhances your mood. Imagine you have a room. That's where you sleep. That's where your wife sleeps. And in the same room, your children sleep. Wallahi, brothers, we must continue to thank Allah. Back in Africa, elsewhere, in Asia, there are places, there are towns where the only thing people call a house is polythene with wood. There are people who have been in camps. They were born in camps. Their, their parents were born in camps. They do not know a home. 
And of course, you don't need to go far. There are people even here in New York, in Washington, everywhere, in Los Angeles, that have no home. They are sleeping on streets. How responsible are you going to regard them? Allahu Akbar Kabira. Wal Jar Salih. A good neighbor who will not give you issue. Even if you do something, rather than call the police on you, they will just tell you, please, brother, neighbor, please, could you I say, I'm sorry. And that will be it. You know, what will happen if um, you have a neighbor and uh, your relations come from home, five of them, and in their excitement, you're welcoming them, they're also welcoming you, and they are speaking in loud voices. And the next thing you see is um, a cop in your house and said as a complaint that you have become a nuisance. How are you going to feel? But you have a good neighbor, he knows this is your um, a time of joy, and he understands. And of course, you also realize your limits. You do not extend it. You do not cause inconvenience. A good neighbor will keep an eye on your children. They will help you to bring your children from school. If you are late or you are, you are delayed in, in the workplace, you trust them, they trust you. Allahu Akbar Kabira. You have a bad neighbor, you are in trouble. You can't sleep well. Wal-Markabul Hani. A ride that is swift and comfortable. Who would not like among us today to drive a nice car? There were no cars during the time of the Prophet ﷺ. They only have horses and camels and donkeys. And the Prophet recognized that it's one of the things that will make you functional. And the opposite is وَأَرْبَعُنْ مِنَ الشَّقَى Misfortune comes from four too. Al Jar Su, a bad neighbor, Wal Maratu Su, a terrible wife. If you go out and you buy something, uh, maybe you see something and you think it's designer, a wristwatch, you give it to your wife, and you are happy, you are elated, you want compliments, and you give it to her, say, eh? How much do you buy this? Ha you know why? Is it because I will cheat you? This is even fake. You don't even know. That's why you should, uh, how much? How much did you buy? Them? Okay. You have bought it for $1,000 because you want to surprise your wife. But you said, eh, I, I bought it for $700. Huh? Eh? Say $700. I saw it for $250 the last time. Where did you buy it? For $700. How are you going to feel? The reciprocal duties don't cause inconvenience to your neighbor. Don't be a source of headache. Don't be a source of inconvenience. Avoid a situation. Even if it's on his own, is good. He doesn't want to complain. Avoid your neighbor complaining about your bad behavior to the creator of both of you. That may be a source of tension. It may be a source of misfortune for you in the life of this world and in the hereafter. And of course, in closing, brothers and sisters, I like to tell you, so many people would never get to read the Quran. They will never get to read the Hadith. You are the Quran they will read. You are the Hadith they will read. How are you the Quran they will read? What is your behavior? If you do well, and you Im not with the intention to impress them, and they get impressed by the way you behave, especially in this country, where Islam, alhamdulillah, is just gaining ground. And every Muslim is a suspect, a potential terrorist, a non-conformist. The only way we could do our da'wah is by behaving well. 
And if we do this, we are not just only avoiding trouble, we are doing active dawah. If we talk from now till kingdom come, and it doesn't reflect in the way we, we behave, well, iyaz billah, ibad Allah. Inna la ayamur bil adl wal isani wa itai zil kurba wa yanha anil fashai wal munkari wal baq ya'idukum la'allakum tadakkaroon. Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, has commanded justice in everything that we do. Be just. Iidilu huwa akrabu li taqwa. Be just. That's the closest to being godly. Well, ihsan, sometimes it is beyond justice. You just have to be good. Because this world is not just. And that should not change you. People will not reciprocate the same way. You are good to them. Don't expect them to be good to you. Just do it. Watch Allah. Take care of your kit and kin. That is your first responsibility. Al Fasha in speech, recklessness in speech, in behavior, licentiousness. Well munkar, whatever it is that you abhor, don't even think of it for others. Rebellion is not part of Islam. Don't rebel. We will continue to have differences. There are alternatives to rebellion and the pain. And they last longer. They cost much less. And they are much more effective. Allah is admonishing us so that we'll take caution. Allahumma a'idh al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Wa dhil al-shirk wa al-mushrikin. Wa dammir a'adaa al-deen ajma'in. وانصر الله مع عبادك المجاهدين في كل مكان اللهم علف بين قلوب المسلمين واصلح ذات بينهم وادهم سبل السلام اللهم عجن كل فقير اللهم عش بي كل جائع اللهم عكس كل عريان اللهم عد دين كل مدين اللهم فرج عن كل مكروب اللهم رد كل غريب اللهم فك كل عسير اللهم أصلح كل فاسد من أمور المسلمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين اللهم فرج حم المحمومين ونفس كرب المكروبين وقت الدين عن المدينين واشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين أقول كولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل زم واستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم أقم الصلاة اقيموا صفوفكم واعتدلوا إن تسوية الصفوف من إقامة الصلاة سووا صفوفكم يرحمكم الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إجاك نعبد وإجاك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إن الإنسان خلق هلوعا إذا مسه شر جذوعا وإذا مس الخير منوعا إلا المصلين الذين هم على صلاتهم دائمون والذين في أموالهم حق معلوم للسائل والمحروم والذين يصدقون بيوم الدين والذين هم من عذاب ربهم مشفقون إن عذاب ربهم غير مأمون 
والذين هم لفروجهم حافظون إلا على أزواجهم أو ما ملكت أيمانهم فإنهم غير ملومين فمن ابتغى وراء ذلك فأولئك هم العدون والذين هم لأماناتهم وعهدهم راعون والذين هم على صلاتهم دائمون أولئك في جنات مكرمون الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إجاك نعبد وإجاك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين فقلت استغفروا ربكم إنه كان غفارا يرسل السماء عليكم مدرارا ويمددكم بأموال وبنين ويجعل لكم جنات ويجعل لكم أنهارا ما لكم لا ترجون لله وقارا وقد خلقكم مطوارا ألم تروا كيف خلق الله سبع سماوات طباقا فجعل القمر فيهن نورا وجعل الشمس سراجا والله أنبتكم من الأرض نباتا ثم يعيدكم فيها ويخرجكم إخراجا والله جعل لكم الأرض بساطا لتسلكوا منها سبلا فجاجا قال نوح ربي إنهم صوني واتبعوا من لم يذده ماله وولده إلا خسارا ومكروا مكرا كبارا فقالوا لا تذرن آلهتكم ولا تذرن ودا ولا سواعا ولا يغوث ويعوق ونصرا وقد أضلوا كثيرا ولا تذل الظالمين إلا ظلالا مما خطيئاتهم نبركوا وادخلوا نارا ولم يجدوا لهم من دون الله أنصارا الله أكبر